Hello everybody and welcome to another hobby cheating video and today we're going to talk about highly distressed leather. So I'm working here on a uh, on a big giant uh, for the Sons of Behemoth and uh, this guy is going to be my sort of harbinger giant uh, and he's going to be an old crazy giant that sort of lives in the swamp that kind of thing and, and portends the the coming of the giants. Uh, so I wanted to make him look old and like he was sort of somebody who's out in nature. And as such, we're going to focus in on, you know, instead of using, a lot of times you see these pants being stitched together flags or something like that. Instead, we're going to go for old leathers. So what do we need to do old leather stuff? You know, if we want to, if we want to really get some, uh, some nice old leathers going, what do we got to do? Well, I started here. This is just Xenothold. And then I gave it a nice... Uh, simple coat of Skeleton Horde contrast. Or sorry, uh, not Skeleton Horde. I apologize. Agreros Dunes. Wrong one. <laughs> I'm reading it right in front of me. Uh, Agreros Dunes contrast. Although you could use Skeleton Horde. Or you could use uh, Transparent Brown from Pro Acryl. Or you could do three or four washes of Seraphim Sepia. Or you could do anything like that. Any roughly, tra or, you know, Sepia ink. Or, 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 or doesn't matter, right? The point is just something that's going to tint it brown and but but be transparent. Because the key with distressed leather is that you have to have you have to build up lots of different texture and capture the way it ages. So we're going to start at the beginning here and I'm going to run a couple pictures for you of old distressed leather up on the screen. So, because as always, if you can start with reality, do so. So let's go look at some real pictures of what distressed leather looks like. Fun, huh? Neat. So you can see that distressed leather often has, there's a couple things we can tell about it. One, it's got a lot of different lines and cracks in it because it's relatively thick and it's, you know, it's skin. It's originally a dermis, right? And two, it tends to wear towards edges. Uh, they get more, uh, they have more exposure. Three, it tends to retain scuffs and those scuffs over time start to discolor and you can have different layers and levels of scuffs. So given that, rea you also notice there's probably often like a spotting to it where you'll see, um, you'll see like, uh, I don't know what to, basically what looks like a stippling effect. I don't know what else to call it in reality. I don't know what causes it. It's just, it's there. So with all that being said, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna get a couple different tools. So first off, we're gonna start with an ivory and a black. So in this case, I'm gonna use just some Abaddon black and some Pro Acryl ivory. And we're gonna use two different kinds of brushes. So the first being a very sharp, thin brush, and the second being a short, squat, stippling brush. Okay, so I'm gonna get all set up here, and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna take a look at exactly how we apply these. All right, so got my paints out and ready to go. We've got just a little bit of ivory and a little bit of black over here on a dry palette. That's all we need. Don't need to go any farther than that. We're gonna start with our stippling brush. You can also use a sponge, <clears throat> excuse me, you can also use a sponge for this. You can use an old toothbrush. You can use a lot of different stuff. Uh, but in this case, since I've got a nice short squat makeup dry brush, we're gonna use that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're just gonna start stabbing at this and we're going to stab focusing a little more on the edges now you notice his let he these like pants he's wearing has these sort of leather straps that are covering over it i'm not worrying about those for this we're pretending like those don't exist for this first step because we can go back and get those later it's also why i didn't finish the skin yet the skin will be a different video, so tune back in for that. So, you get the idea. We just work our way around, and we stipple, 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 okay? So, 
Good. Easy peasy. Anybody can do that part. Nice and simple. In fact, anybody can do any of this. One of the, one of the best parts about working with this, uh, with old leathers is that this is such an easy, easy thing. The key is you need to remember it's supposed to be random. And human brains don't love random. Human brains like symmetry and order and stuff like that. But we're not going to do that. We're going to do random. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to find our edges. Okay. And we're going to start just hashing in. Now the, this has these, these sort of straps together, but that's okay. We're just going to go ahead and hash in some little lines near the edge. Nice, thin, sharp brush. We'll do it on the knee here because that'll be a real nice thing I can show on camera. All right, so we just kind of draw them toward the edges. Let's see if I can get that. Yeah, there we go, the inside of the knee on camera. Here where you see these things poke out, this would naturally be grabbing some more stuff, be scuffing up against things. So we'll just go ahead and hit some harder ones there. Same with the bottom of the leathers, right? Up here toward the edges of the leathers on the inside of his leg. And the key is you don't want to make them all the same size. You're not trying to create a bunch of evenly sized hashes. Some will be very long, some will be very short, some will be not the present at all. You just kind of let, you just let it happen. You just kind of get into the flow, get into that zen state, and you just start making little lines. Okay. You can also make little lines other places. It doesn't have to be all near the edge. That's where they'll tend to gather. They're not all going to be there. So you can also just kind of doop, just throw a little line right there. If you need help making sharp, thin lines, you can use a little flow improver. You can mix in a little ink, something like that. Sometimes you can just dot the edge or stipple your way down it like that. So instead of, they don't all have to be big lines. Sometimes you can do a little lines. You can stipple first and then kind of come in and just hash it out. It's just fun, right? Because it's just, it's freeing. Like there's no, the last thing you want to do is just throw some dots around. Just throw them dots. More dots, more dots, more dots. When you get to clumps like this, where you have the old leather bunching up, this is a great place to come in with your stippling and just kind of really randomly stipple around. helps you bring those folds out nice and strong. Same with anything like here. This kind of edge of the leg where it's all, you can see where it has this big cut. It's coming out and then suddenly it cuts back in. Great place to come in. Stipple near these edges. And so on and so forth. So I'm just gonna keep working my way around this thing. Just lots and lots of hashes and dots. Uh, but, for like, I'll do that all off camera in a minute, but I'm gonna show you what else I'm gonna do at the same time, which is I'm gonna take some of that black. Now I used Abaddon black because it's relatively actually weak. Like as black paints go, it's not super strong. And I watered it down just a little bit. And then what you wanna do is in the same way, you just wanna come in and throw some of those dots around, throw some scratches in with that. Mix in with the edges here Again, quite randomly. This time you can hit a couple of high spots so you can have a place where maybe there's an ear representing a small little cut or something like that. Doesn't You don't really need to pay attention to what ones you did previously. You can make a match, like you could have a cut over top if you want, and that's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It's your, it's your mini. You just wanna get a couple like dark spots in there. And like I said, the Avedon black is so weak when you water it down a little bit. You see how that's really not turning anything strongly black, right? And that's what we ultimately want. 
You can also, into the deeper areas where you have more shadow, uh, you can also throw in just a bunch of little stipples there to like reinforce your shadows, but add some texture down there. So you got lots of options. The key is to go nuts. Like, just go wild. Have a good time. Just absolutely mess around, make little dots. Don't be don't be like a dot here, and then I'm going to put another dot here, and then an equal size dot here, and then an equal size dot here. Sometimes I make big clumps. Sometimes it'll just be one or two. Sometimes it'll be all spread around. Like, be as random as you can. Turn your brain off. The key to any of these, these sites, types of techniques is to stop thinking about it. If you're thinking about, well, where's the right place to put it? Am I doing it right? Is it balanced? Did I get it symmetrical? Then it's gonna look wrong. You need to just kind of like ran, get this like state where you're letting your, uh, you're letting your hand and your brush do the talking and your brain is just kind of off thinking about something else. That's really the nice way to go. That's, that's what I recommend for painting. Stop thinking about it, make your brain do something else. Maybe, I don't know, think about your taxes or something. It's right, I don't know. Something that you, you uh, are simultaneously required to think about and bored with. That way you, you, you're kind of angry at it at the same time. That'll help the, the stabbing motion. You know, you can channel that inner frustration into the stabs. Uh, so we just keep working that around. Lots of little different sizes, lots of little different hashes. You can cross over with some of them. Okay. Boom. So I'm going to do that to all the leather around this thing, and then we'll come back in a moment. All right. So we're back. Our homeboy here is all sketched up. I'll show him in a minute, but I've made a little premix of six different things. And I'm going to show you how much fun we can have because now we're at the fun step. So over here on the left, we have some of our old friend Agrax Earthshade. Here at the top, we've got some trans transparent brown and transparent black from Proacryl. I like their transparent brown because it's very orangey. Uh, down here, we've got some smoke uh, from Vallejo Model Color, a nice transparent, uh, really rich, interesting color. Right here, we've got some Andalusian Earth, Andalusian? It's a green wash uh, from Green Stuff World. And right here, we've got some sepia ink uh, from Game Color. So all of these have been thinned. The inks, the ones that are heavier have been thinned. I used a little Green Stuff World Master Medium and Warcolors Flow Improver uh, just to get everything kind of moving and, and very liquidy. So now comes the very fun step. So now what we do, we're going to move this over to the side so I can actually bring this guy onto camera. You can see we've got a whole riot of nonsense here, just nonsense. And that's okay. We want to start with the nonsense. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some of each of these and start working it over these in interesting ways. So we'll start here with the smoke. And as always, you can test it somewhere like the back of your hand. And as always, I'm keeping a paper towel over here to wick off some of the excess. Okay. And then we just start glazing over it. And just running it right down there. And you can see how instantly it's snapping a lot of that back into place. But we can play around while it's still wet. We don't have to be, this is the great part about it. With these old leathers, they have lots of different tones and colors to them. And we can just play with that. So let's get some transparent black here into some of these shadows, right? Where we kind of have that up there under the leg. We can just kind of push that into where we think there would be shadowed spots. We can grab a little bit of our Agrax, smooth that out, let that run down into there. I know a lot of times when you see people say like, when, whenever you apply a wash or a shade or something like that, People are like, oh, you, you got to let it dry completely or you'll, you'll just ruin all your work. It'll just go nuts. The world will implode. Literally everything, civilization as we know it, will collapse. Cats and dogs. Uh, no, it's fine. You can just keep messing around with this. And it's really nice because then all the colors integrate in this really weird, organic, natural way that you couldn't really do intentionally. Um, 
you do want to make sure you avoid pooling so every so often you'll kind of go through and you know pick up some of the excess and wick it off but just let it start staining everything think of this like um like you're staining a coffee table or something you know Here I have just a big selection of colors because it's fun to work in a bunch of different stuff. Leathers have all these different tones in them. And again, the reason I'm letting the paint kind of decide where it wants to be to a point, like letting it run around and, and go kind of nuts, is because, again, this stuff gets... Like, old leather is very organic. It has weathered organically. What I mean by that is it's had a hundred little scratches and dents and dings and things that have happened over the years. We'll paint his big butt here. This guy, this old giant has like the biggest butt. He's just got a big flat butt. So because it's so organic and how it's been weathered, we have to do our best to try to match that uh, using just the, the paint, the tools we have at our disposal, which is just basically paint. And I can't, you know, we in the scale, we're not gonna match actually a hundred little uh, different years or days or whatever, depending on how old the leather is, of the various scratches and hashes and dots and things like that. But we can set it up with layers. And by letting these colors flow together, incidentally, by having different shades and tones show up in there, right, we can make it so it feels much more organic, much more like it is in nature when you'll have leathers that have lots of brown tones in them and then they've got blacks and stuff like that mixed in, deep, you know, purplish tones, sepias, all sorts of things. So we can just kind of go nuts and, and have that in there. You can stipple these things around, do whatever you want to your leather. You decide. This is your world. You are the creator. And so the advantages to using all these different inks and stuff like this is not only that it then gives you a nice sort of automatic, oh, careful touching your finger against it, or that'll happen. This guy broke free of his little uh, thing I'm holding him on in case that's not horribly obvious. That's fine. Such is life. We paint on. You notice how I'm often just really flooding the area but then going back and removing it. Again, that's an intentional choice because by just flooding the area, what's gonna happen is those pools are actually gonna make some like little coffee stains here and there. Now, usually when we're washing and applying inks, our nightmare of nightmares is coffee stains, right? In other words, if you've ever seen that, um, that sort of tide marks that show up on your miniature after you've washed it, that's a coffee stain, right? And it's usually an absolute nightmare. However, in this case, and especially with old leathers, this is one of the one of the times where it's not a disadvantage, it's an advantage. Having a wash that sits there and coffee stains things actually makes the leather look a lot cooler because that the way that it tide marks and sort of in it, it that's happening because it's dispersing pigment in, unevenly. And the way it's doing that is actually much like how old leather looks. So in this case, it actually ends up being a huge advantage for us to do that. So eventually though, you will get to the point where you wanna just kinda of let it rest, where you've mixed enough of your colors in, you got kinda of everything going on there, all of our different spots. Maybe we've got enough of our dark colors, whatever we feel is apropos. Cleaned up enough of the big pools. And then at some point, we're gonna let it rest. And so now you can see with it wet, you can see how that covered up all of our, all those different hashes, but they're still kind of showing through. If you see any big pools like that, that you want to kind of get in there and sop up. You don't want anything that large sitting on a flat space. So once you're decided to let it rest, you just kind of go in with a mostly dry brush and you just kind of dab it around there and just make sure you got all those little elements out. Now the key is we let it dry and we see what magic has happened. Uh, by the way, you can go a lot more crazy with the colors than I did here. Uh, I used a lot of kind of things that are still in brown and worked in some greens here and there. 
but you can really go nuts with this. Leather is actually quite a wide variety of influenced colors. You can work in reds, you can work in um, purples, you can work in, as I'm doing here, greens. Uh, yellows and oranges are certainly on the table. So, I mean, you can really have a good time working in, as long as they're thin and transparent like this, you can kind of stick anything in the into leather. And as long as the sort of majority tone is a brown or a sandy or a black or something like that, it'll feel completely appropriate. Um, it'll just feel like a pretty old, worn, exotic leather. Uh, so we're going to let him sit, let that dry, and we'll come back in a minute and I'll talk about next steps you can do to go from here. All right, so here's our big boy. Why didn't you re-glue him in between the time when it was drying, Vince? Well, that's an excellent question, viewer. I don't know. I don't know what the answer to that question is. But at any rate, so you can see how he's uh, it's all dried out, and now we get some real interesting... See all the natural transitions and colors in there where you can still see all the little texture poking out from below, right? Like a lot of our hashes and scratches, they're still there, but they're much more muted. They look much more part of it now. So now you've got some fun steps you can do uh, because the reality is you don't have to stop here. As with all of these things, you could, and this is perfectly acceptable leather. There's nothing wrong with you know where we're at right now but of course you can keep going farther. Uh, so we're gonna go a little farther in this video because hey, come on, isn't that what we always do? Don't we always go just a little too far? Uh, but if you leave now because you like it or because you're, you're happy with this, go ahead and hit the like button on your way out. <laughs> All right, so basically I can get some more of that ivory that I've got. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into that. And what I'm gonna do is sort of now create a second layer of that. Just reinforce some of these hashes where I want just randomly around the edge make some different scratches around the area the point being is what you don't have to stop at one time one of the cool things about working on kind of old leathers is that you can just get into this really great zone and do this over and over again the more you kind of go back and make little hashes and scratches and then wash over all of it and then do it again Again, the more organically natural it looks. So it's wonderful because, again, it's not something you have to like think a great deal about. It's not a process that requires a lot of real careful brush control. Stuff that, frankly, can get kind of exhausting and annoying. I mean, we've all been to that place where, you know, hours into edge highlighting something, you just want to kind of uh, slam your head against the desk because you're, you, you, you've hit the, the wall of how much you can do what is a very mentally exhaustive process. This is the opposite of that. This is so liberating because there's no single thing you're actually doing. You're just making lots of random colors. It brings you back to finger painting as a child or something like that when you were just creating art for no real purpose or reason and didn't really know what you wanted it to be. You just started throwing color around because it seemed like a fun thing to do. This can be much the same sort of thing. When I go back in the second or third time or fifth time I do this, by the way, I'll, I'll progressively hit kind of less and less of the, the actual area. So that way I start building up actual distinction between the various sections. So now, for example, I can come back in and maybe we'll cover everything with this. By the way, if I were doing this in, in a, you know, sort of, if I were you at home, I would probably give your, your paint that I just put on a little bit longer to dry, so I'm going to be touching my brush rather lightly here because I could pick up paint that hasn't really fully set yet. You do want to watch out for that, so make sure as you work your way around when you start applying a bunch of heavy washes, you do run the risk of picking up old paint. And so it's a, it's a good idea to make sure that your, your, your first layers are, are nice and dry or that you kind of lighten the touch of your brush a little bit. Uh, so if you want to be real aggressive uh, with it, that's fine. Just make sure you um, just make sure you give the, that ivory or black or whatever you're using a while to dry. You can also start on the second time through shaping colors a little more aggressively. So maybe I'll take some of this smoke and some of this black, mix them together, and we'll start forcing some nice, real deep shadows down here in the areas or up where I think I want some deeper shadows in there. 
And you can just keep repeating that process over and over and over again until you get something that you like. And it's going to look real varied and cool. You're going to see lots of different layers of scratches. Some are with, are some of which are going to be, you know, darn near invisible. They'll just look like deep buried layers of the leather. You can add in color. So like I said here where, you know, I have this very orangey brown. You can go in with, you know, an airbrush or with glazes and you could bring in more oranges like I did there with this one. Or you could take a yellow ink and mix it in with your, your leather and, and get much the same effect. So there's really lots of fun things you can do. In this case, I'm going to eventually work in a lot of different greens into this guy. Because again, swamp, dwe swamp dweller, you know, weird old hermit of the woods is what I'm aiming for. So because of that, I want to make sure that he has... That kind of green tone hidden without. I think it'll actually work really nice against the uh, the other tones in here. But that's it. You just keep repeating that, and you can get to a really fun place as far as looking like you've got heavily distressed, very old, worn leather. So there you go. I hope you liked that. Uh, if you did, hey, give it a like. Uh, so if you've got suggestions for future hobby cheating videos or questions about this, feel free to drop those down in the comments. Always happy to help. Uh, but uh, subscribe for additional hobby cheating. We have new videos here every Saturday. As always, I thank you very much for watching this one, and we'll see you next time.